Some of you are going to the gym every single day and you wonder why you're still not seeing any muscle growth. And the unfortunate part about this is that as long as you do not have the correct information, you will be stuck in this loop over and over again. But in today's video, we are going to break that because I'll be sharing all the scientific tips that will help you not only break through that plateau, but break through it as fast as possible. And not to mention the fact that these are the exact same tips I used myself to get to where I am in terms of my physique. First, in order for us to be able to apply these tips effectively, we need to first understand the definition of muscle growth scientifically, as in what actually causes muscle growth. So in simple terms, muscle growth occurs if there's an enough stimulus applied onto your muscle fibers such that they tear down and then they go through a process of recovery. Now, this process is just to ensure that your muscles come back bigger and stronger such that they are able to withstand a whole new level of stimulus the next time they are exposed to it. So when you go into a workout session, you're putting damage onto your muscle fibers. Then in turn, because of that, they'll have to adapt to be able to withstand a new level of stimulus. Now, after the recovery process, your muscles are able to withstand a whole new level of stimulus. Then as a result, when you actually do this onto your muscles, as in applying the whole new level of stimulus onto your next workout session such that it's more challenging than your previous workout your muscles are then now forced to tear down repair and come back bigger and stronger so that they are able to handle a whole new level of stimulus the next time they're exposed to it so think of your muscles as an adaptive machine every time they're exposed to a certain level of challenge they force themselves to adapt so that the next time they're exposed to it they're able to withstand it now this process goes on and on as your muscle keeps on growing bigger and bigger. The only time this process stops is if your muscles are no longer experiencing a whole new challenging stimulus that was better than the previous workout. And because of this, your muscles then tend to plateau or even digress because there's nothing else challenging them to grow. Then you wonder why you keep on getting skinnier even though you keep on being consistent with going to the gym every single day. Now, there are multiple ways for you to be able to achieve this, but we'll talk about adding weight first. Suppose that your dumbbell bench press weight is 40 kilos on each dumbbell. So in order for you to be able to apply progressive overload in this case, you want to add two to five kilos on your next dumbbell bench press session. Now, keeping in mind that you're maintaining the same sets and reps, this is the exact process that you'll be applying on a week to week basis until you reach a plateau because trying to dumbbell bench press 200 kilos on each dumbbell is the dumbest thing ever. Unless if you are on some dangerously nice things, at this point, you want to adjust to different ways of applying progressive overload. So if you can now perform 10 reps with 50 kilos on each dumbbell, and that is your plateau in as far as adding more weight, then you want to add a rep or a set each week and this will help you grow while you're maintaining the weight that you're lifting. And this was fully supported by 2017 meta-analysis that was conducted by Dr. Brett Schoenfeld. And to add on that, this is quite helpful, especially if you're training from home and you can't add any more weights. Now, which brings us to the next tip, which is more stretch onto your form. Now, recent studies have discovered an interesting phenomena known as the stretch-mediated hypertrophy, which emphasized the effects of muscle growth while that muscle is exposed under a low during a full stretch and surprisingly full range of motion is not always the answer. Now these two studies examined the effects of muscle hypertrophy during varied ranges of motion. Now in this one study on a leg extension subjects were divided into groups. Now the first group was expected to perform this leg extension exercise with a partial range of motion at the bottom part of the movement whereas the other group that was in the experiment was expected to perform the partial range of motion at the bottom half of the movement and the last group was expected to perform the exercise with the full range of motion. Now results clearly showed that there was more growth on the partial range of motion at the bottom part of the movement and this is simply because of that full stretch that you experience during this part of the movement. This also applies to exercises that naturally expose your muscles to a full stretch. For instance, this 2021 study examined the effects of hamstring string growth under the seated leg curl versus the lying leg curl. Now, a group of 20 healthy individuals were expected to perform the exercise one leg on a seated leg curl and the other leg on the lying leg curl. And results clearly showed that there was a greater hamstring growth 
on the seated leg curl compared to the lying leg curl. Again, because of that full stretch that the seated leg curl exposes your hamstrings to. If you look at the hamstrings, majority of the muscles cross the knee and hip joint. And because of this, when you expose your hamstrings to a seated leg curl, there's a deeper stretch that you get onto your hamstrings compared to the lying leg curl, which obviously makes sense. Same goes for the tricep overhead extension compared to the cable push down extension, which puts a greater stretch onto the long head of your tricep. Now, this is where training volume comes into play. If you want to build a lot more muscle, you want to structure your program in such a way that it trains each muscle group at least twice per week. A study by Brett Schoenfeld, Dan Arkborn, and James Krieger clearly shows that there's a dose response relationship between resistance training volume and muscle hypertrophy, meaning the greater the weekly training volume, the higher the muscle growth. The general rule of thumb is to keep your sets between 10 to 20 sets per muscle group per week. So if you're training three sets per muscle group per week and daydream about finally having Mike Mance's arms, then you have another thing coming. Again, with the adding on of more sets, you don't want to get too excited because anything beyond 20 sets per muscle group per week is overkill. This is simply because your weekly training volume is so high such that your muscle recovery is affected. So a direct rule of thumb is to try and keep your sets between that 10 to 20 sets per muscle group per week range. Now, if you're looking for a direct number to actually speed up the process, try to aim for at least four sets per muscle group per workout session. Now, the next tip is pushing to failure. You might say, well, yeah, but I'm already pushing to failure, but be honest. Are you really? If the next thing after a working set is immediately walk up to your friends at the gym and start having comfortable conversations about how all of you need to pay off your student loans, then you really didn't push to failure. Okay then, well, how hard is hard enough? At least three to zero reps in reserve, meaning there should be a notable decrease in the tempo towards the end of each and every set that you have. A study that actually gave way to this idea was performed in 2005, where subjects on a lead pull down were split into two groups. One group was performing 10 reps continually, whereas the other group was performing 5 reps, 30 seconds rest in between, and then another 5 reps after that mini rest period. Now with the other group, the aim of the study was to ensure that they hardly reach muscle failure, whereas with the other group, the effective sets were inevitable because they had no rest in between, meaning they were getting closer and closer to failure. Now the results showed that the group with 10 reps continually without any rest in between had had more growth at about 8.9% more growth than the other group. And again, since the study is old, there's a new meta-analysis that actually still supports this, showing that there's more muscle recruitment or muscle growth as you get closer and closer to muscular failure. Now, seeing that at this point here, it means four reps shy of failure, and the other end of the graph of the reps shy of failure clearly shows that there's a higher muscle recruitment. Now, the tips we mentioned by far are what you're supposed to do while you are in the gym in order for you to ensure muscle growth. The following tips will cover what you're actually supposed to do when you are outside the gym in order to maximize as much muscle growth as possible. And the next tip is muscle recovery. Now, as we mentioned earlier multiple times that when you go into a workout session, you're tearing down your muscles and then they need to recover in order for them to come back bigger and stronger. But now this process will be hindered. However, if you jump into the next workout session without having fully recovered, in fact, studies show that training a muscle while it hasn't fully recovered will not only affect the recovery process but also reduce the activation of the muscle and reduce the force that the muscle is able to give out during an exercise by 50 percent and this also takes us back to what we mentioned earlier about not adding too much sets to your weekly training volume this is to make sure that when you jump into your next workout session your muscles are ready and fully recovered to take on a new level of stimulus now the next tip Tip is eating enough protein. Now, protein is essential when it comes to building muscle. And because of the amino acids that are needed to aid in muscle growth, aka protein synthesis, the general rule of thumb, if you want to build muscle as fast as possible, is to consume one gram of protein per pound of body weight. And do this evenly spread out on a daily basis at about four to five mils per day. So if your daily protein intake is 160 grams, you want to spread that out evenly throughout the four to five meals on a daily basis. There's a dedicated video in this channel that covers in depth 
how to use protein powder effectively to build as much muscle as possible. Now, the last tip we're covering is caloric surplus. Now, in order for you to entirely maximize growth, the research suggests that you be on a caloric surplus. Now, your body contains two types of enzymes. You have the mTOR enzymes and the AMPK enzyme. And in order for us to build a conducive environment for our bodies to actually pack on more muscle mass, we need a higher level of mTOR enzymes and a lower level of AMPK enzymes. And this is achieved through a caloric surplus, meaning this is the exact thing that actually prevents your body from being in a catabolic state. But also keeping in mind that eating too much too fast will also lead to unwanted fat gain during your bulking phase. So what you're looking for is a lean bulk where your caloric surplus is at about 10 to 15% above your maintenance level. If you need help in figuring out your caloric maintenance levels, you can use online macro calculators to help you figure that out. Building muscle and escaping plateaus as fast as possible is actually possible with science-based tips. And if you consistently apply these tips mentioned in this video, you'll be well on your way to growing bigger and breaking through all of those plateaus. Now, in order for you to scientifically introduce structure to your workout. I'm giving away this workout program if you're interested. This will actually introduce structure to your workout routines and help you build muscle as effective as possible. Now, this workout program has been structured in such a way that it accommodates all the scientific research in as far as the weight training is concerned, the periodization is concerned, the formations necessary according to science that are going to help you maximize as much muscle growth as possible, and the nutrition side of things that will help you couple your workout sessions with the proper dieting outside the gym. Now, the program will be available soon and if you're interested, leave a comment down below and you'll be the first one to get it once it's launched. If you enjoyed this video and found it helpful, don't forget to like, subscribe and leave a comment down below. I'll see you on the next video.